Madison, Wisconsin, December 22, Brad Davison. Photo by Stacy Revere, Getty Images, everything seemed to be going great for Wisconsin basketball. They were about to close out the non-conference slate with just two losses and the defeats were justifiable. The Badgers went on the road to play a Western Kentucky team with potential, but were barely .500. The Hilltoppers got Wisconsin in a classic trap game. Wisconsin returned home and fell to Minnesota. The hot shooting of Demetrik Trice has cooled off. There's no doubt that he had one of the hottest hands in college basketball, but he really struggled. It started against Grambling, but it wasn't much of a game. It continued into the game against Western Kentucky and that costed him. The game against Minnesota was a simple case of Big Ten play. It was in Madison, but they usually play each other two times per season. The guard play got overmatched against Minnesota. Amir Coffey couldn't miss in the first half, Dupree McBrayer went to the line seven times and Brock Stell put in two important three-pointers in the second half. Trice shot 30% from the field, Brad Davison only scored two baskets and neither of them went to the line. Brevin Pritzel and Kobe King both shot a three-pointer off the bench, but the backcourt of Minnesota was just too much at times. Wisconsin was able to get Jordan Murphy fouled out and had Daniel Oturu playing with four fouls halfway through the second half. But other than Ethan Tapp who had eight rebounds and Nate Rovers who came up with five, no one else was crashing the boards. The two front court guys were the only Badgers in double digits. Wisconsin had the ultimate response. They went to Happy Valley and came up with a 19-point win. The play of Rovers is evolving. He was in double digits once again, made a three-point shot and blocked five shots. Hap came up with 22 points and eight boards of his own while Davison went three for three from outside. Wisconsin got 19 points from its bench and Aleem Ford didn't even make a shot. They still only went to the line five times combined as a team. Somehow Wisconsin put 71 and only made three shots from the line. It was certainly a nice get right game and it was done on the road of all things. Wisconsin will now get a Purdue team that has lost six games already. The Boilermakers have had a pretty difficult schedule, but only has wins over Maryland and Iowa to show for it. Purdue struggled to find a rhythm against a good Michigan State team on Tuesday. They have a quick turnaround going from the Breslin Center to the Cole Center. Wisconsin will try and hand them their seventh loss. What do they have to do to accomplish that? Page 2 MADISON, Wisconsin, December 13th, Kobe King. Photo by Dylan Buell, Getty Images, Wisconsin's bench has some potential to be really good. Brevin Pritzel started a few games last year, being inserted in and out of the lineup. Kobe King has made a start this year when Khalil Iverson went down with a leg injury. Liam Ford is good for a three-pointer per night and is averaging three points per game. Charles Thomas is a senior and is itching to break out. Ty Strickland has potential. I figured Strickland was going to take over the Trevor Anderson role when the Green Bay transfer went down. Strickland would play about five minutes in every game. He played three minutes in the first game without Anderson. Freshman then played in 17 minutes against Savannah State and scored 14. He then only played in 9 minutes in 2 games while missing the 2 losses. Pritzel and King are the main pieces coming off the bench. They are playing that role because Demetric Trice is a true point guard and Brad Davison came onto the scene in a big way last season. Pritzel was a 4-star way back in 2015 and is a redshirt junior. King was a highly recruited three-star last season, got hurt and received a red shirt as well. Both are Wisconsin kids who the Badgers were excited to get. Aleem Ford is your prototypical wing player. He's got size at 6'8", but hardly plays near the basket. His shot backed him up last season, averaging just about one three-pointer per game. 
He missed the first three this season, was eased in during Battle 4 Atlantis and is now the third guy off the bench. Even though there's talk that Carson Edwards does it all for Purdue, the Boilermakers do have a lot of guys they throw out there each game. There are four Boilermakers who made all 15 starts this season. Three other guys have been rotated in and out at the five. Regardless, they all potential to be reliable basketball players. Pritzel is more of a three-point threat than King. Sasha Stefanovic plays almost 15 minutes per game and has a nice shot from distance. Eric Hunter Jr. Isn't so much and would be a nice matchup for King. Freshman Aaron Wheeler stands 6 foot 9, 200 pounds, but plays with a bigger body. I saw him muscle 15 points against Maryland. He could be a mismatch for Aleem Ford in the paint so expect Thomas to see more minutes. We haven't even talked about Matt Harms or what Trevion Williams did last game, but they're coming up in the next slide. Page 32 Wisconsin needs its front court to step up Wisconsin has a really shallow front court. Surprisingly that wasn't the only reason why they lost to Minnesota. The Badgers' best player does reside in the front court but there's not much help after the two starters. Against the Golden Gophers it was their shooters in the back court that outplayed the Badgers which doesn't seem right. But Ethan Happ and company managed to get Minnesota into foul trouble late. Wisconsin let Lamar Stevens try and defeat them single-handedly. He dropped 22 points. He's a forward, but isn't your prototypical post-up man. Mike Watkins managed 10 rebounds, but just 4 points. No one else reached double digits. Wisconsin still got beat in the rebounding department, but Charlie Thomas played 10 minutes, scored 7 points, stayed out of foul trouble and really took a giant step. The fact that Aleem Ford only played 7 minutes and Thomas was in for the 10th of May be related. It also may be that Greg Gard had trust in Thomas being more physical with the bigger Nanny Lions. Thomas does go 6 foot 8, 253. He has potential to be somewhat of a force in the paint. Ford is as tall as Thomas, but weighs almost 50 points less. Remember when I said we'd revisit Matt Harms and Trevion Williams? This is where they come into play. No one in the Big Ten is going to match the 7-foot-2 Harms. The best thing to do is force him to play outside and throw double teams at him. Also try and get him into foul trouble. The Badgers managed to do that against Minnesota with their big. Roovers and Hap will have to play some extra minutes to body the big Boilermaker. I wasn't planning on talking about Williams. He hadn't played more than 12 minutes in a game and missed two of them before the showdown with Michigan State. Then he played 21 minutes, scored 13 and grabbed 12 boards. This isn't Strickland putting up double digits against Savannah State. It's the Spartans at the Breslin Center. So that adds extra pressure to the already depleted Badger front court. Evan Boudreaux is 6 foot 8 and will more than likely draw Hap. That's because Grady Eifert starts and has the ability to shoot from the outside which favors Nate Rivers. I have a theory that Williams was played a lot more against Michigan State to prepare him for the battle with Hap on Friday. Or I could be totally wrong and Williams will only play 5 minutes. But I'm guessing my first statement will be true. Either way, Wisconsin better stay out of foul trouble, the bigs need to hit free throws and hope one or more Boilermaker big men gets into foul trouble. Page 4 photo by Jonathan Daniel, Getty Images This comes by no surprise. Carson Edwards and Ethan Happ are heavily debated on who is the best player in the Big Ten. Edwards is going to run away with the Big Ten scoring title and it probably won't even be close. The Boilermakers are going to throw a lot of bodies at Wisconsin, but the only reliable scorer is the junior who's averaging over 24 points per game. He is coming off his worst shooting night this season. He only scored 11 points and believe it or not, Edwards has scored less in a game before. 
I had a feeling watching that Michigan State game that Edwards seemed a little off and sure enough, he finished with just 11 points, shot a not so good 2 for 13 from a long distance and just 3 for 16 from the floor. Edwards played in 36 minutes and when he plays in 35 or more this season, he's averaging almost 27 points per game. So coming off one of his worst nights shooting in over a year, he's probably out for blood. Not to mention, Purdue is in danger right now. They have not won 10 games yet and are just 3 games above .500, he likes to take control because he knows he has the shot. When he's on, there's not many better than him. But the thing is, he and Ryan Klein are being relied upon to run the point, but they're both obvious shooting guards. They combined for exactly 103 pointers so far this season. So who guards him? Great question. Khalil Iverson hasn't been talked about much because he doesn't put up many offensive stats. He's a grinder on defense, has 12 steals and 7 blocks this season. When you think of Badger backcourt defense, Brad Davison comes to mind. He and all those charges along with leading the Badgers with 20 steals. That would be a fun matchup. But if Edwards is bringing the ball up, Dimitri Trice is the quote-unquote point guard and he is second with 13 steals. Those are the obvious candidates on who will match up with Edwards. It needs to be mentioned that the Badgers has to control the tempo. Wisconsin basketball is a slow-paced, use-the-entire-shot clock team. On both sides of the ball. Whomever is on the electric Edwards is going to have to make sure that is done. Or otherwise, he's going to run up 40 points like he did against Texas earlier this season.